Good evening from Washington, D.C. I'm Mehdi Hassan, in for Chris Hayes. One of the open questions following the January 6th attack on our nation's capital was, was this a coordinated attack? Was it planned with the help of Trump allies like Roger Stone and carried out by the right-wing militias they were in contact with? Well, there's a new report out from Reuters today that basically says, no, it was not. Quote, the FBI has found scant evidence that the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol was the result of an organized plot to overturn the presidential election result, according to four current and former law enforcement officials. Now, first off, one of the most important things to look at when you're reading a piece like this is sourcing. Who is putting this information out and why? In this case, it's four current and former law enforcement officials. So you have to wonder what narrative they're trying to push and on whose behalf. But if we take this reporting at face value and say there was no overarching plot, just a bunch of small groups of random people that stormed the Capitol on 1-6, in many ways, that's actually worse for Donald Trump. Let me explain. First, as for right-wing militias, members of the Oath Keepers have been charged with conspiracy to disrupt the election certification. A few of them have already pled guilty. So there was certainly some element of planning. And in the lead-up to the attack, these are some of the messages those people were sending to each other. Quote, Trump said it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. He wants us to make it wild. That's what he's saying. He called us all to the Capitol and wants us to make it wild. Sir, yes, sir. Gentlemen, we are heading to D.C. Pack your expletive. These people, some of whom have legally admitted to it, went to the Capitol that day because they thought they were following Donald Trump's orders. And they are not alone. Other rioters who stormed the Capitol, who are not affiliated with any militia groups, who weren't necessarily part of a conspiracy, are out defending themselves, saying they only did it because Trump wanted them to. The only reason any of those people went to the Capitol to storm it and to do whatever they did there was because Trump demanded it, Trump asked for it, and Trump wanted it. The president asked people to come and show their support. I feel like it's the least that we could do. Uh, that's kind of why I came from um, Central Texas and went all the way to D.C. So me personally, I do not feel a sense of shame or guilt from my heart from what I was doing. I thought I was following my president. I thought I was following what we were called to do. The amazing thing is that around the time of Trump's second impeachment, this time for inciting the Capitol attack, Republicans were arguing that you could not blame Trump or his speech on the 6th of January for the violence if it was a bunch of militia groups who had planned it all in advance. Well, that argument has kind of fallen apart today. As for Trump's own incitement, Here's law professor Jonathan Turley, who defended Trump as a witness during his first impeachment, arguing that Trump never said anything to incite the mob. This speech itself does not give a clear basis for the charges of insurrection or incitement. The president talks about his followers marching on Congress peacefully, uh, is one reference that he made. Uh, he does not call for riots. He does not call for violence. But those comments on Fox, where else, are not accurate. Here is Trump on the morning of January the 6th. And we're going to have to fight much harder. And Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And if he doesn't, that will be a, a sad day for our country. We're going to walk down to the Capitol... And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. Donald Trump was whipping up the crowd, cheering them on to storm the Capitol. And they followed his instructions and marched to the Capitol, saying this. <laughs> We were invited here from the horse's mouth. But if that's not enough for you, you just need to go back a few weeks before the attack, when Donald Trump repeatedly met with a group of Republican Congress members to strategize how to overturn the election results. 
And if that's not enough, just go back to the weeks and months following the election, when Trump and his allies were out in full force telling everyone who would listen that the election had been stolen. If we are right about the fraud, Joe Biden can't be president. They're trying to steal an election. They're trying to rig an election. It's going to be a very hard thing to concede because we know there was massive fraud. Trump even preemptively made the case that the election would be rigged in the months leading up to the election itself, spending all summer complaining about mail-in ballots. Donald Trump primed his base to expect fraud. He incited them with his words. He dispatched members of the Republican Party to do the same, and so it's not surprising they chose to act on 1-6. Yeah, maybe it was a bunch of largely random people who stormed the Capitol. Maybe it was not some master plan. But if it was just a bunch of randoms, of individuals, you have to ask, who whipped them up? Why did they decide to go attack the Capitol, seemingly out of the blue? Since January the 6th, Trump has gone out of his way to praise these people, calling his rally before the attack a love fest and praising the rioter who was shot dead trying to breach the House chamber basically holding her up as a martyr. He even attacked the officer who shot her, saying it was unprovoked. Well, today that officer was exonerated in an internal probe that ended the investigations into that incident. You do not have to look very far to see the impact of Donald Trump's words and his continued incitement of violence. Just look at the near disaster in Washington, D.C. yesterday, when a Trump supporter parked his truck near the Capitol and threatened to blow it up, all while live-streaming on his Facebook feed, that the election was stolen and Joe Biden should resign. Wonder where he heard that. Maybe it's true that there was no grand or pre-planned conspiracy by armed militias to disrupt the election certification on January the 6th. But that just means Donald Trump is even more responsible for everything that happened on that day and since.